you're not happy, there's so many transferable skills that people have, you know, especially like radio, you know, the writing and the voicing and the acting and all that stuff can be, can go somewhere else. And, uh, you know, everybody's working from home and stuff. So you just got to find that niche and dial into it. You think about everything that needs a voice, um, things that you wouldn't even, you know, the voice on the bus or the voice for the e-learning program for the staff or... God, there's so much of it. So uh, you certainly have to bounce around and convince people that you're, you know what you're talking about. Um, you know, so for the audiobooks, you know, nonfiction or fiction, um, you've really got to get in there. And, and I mean, I do a lot of video games too. So that's, that's certainly acting and, and finding the character and, and all those things. But then, you know, You've got your on hold messaging for the the bank across the street or, you know, I do so many projects for so many people all over the place that uh, that's part of the biggest excitement really is is waking up and just not knowing what I'm going to be voicing today. And then get some comes around to me and it's like, oh, Mike, what is, what what's new? Well, I'm a talking skeleton for a living. And that's that's really it. Big part of audiobook production especially the the fiction stuff is is character voices and remembering who's who and who sounds like what hi welcome to indie authors today we have michael neve thanks for coming and being with me today and thanks for you, having me on i'm well i'm super excited because you are a voice actor do would you call yourself a voice actor call yourself I, a voice I would now. Yes, it took me a little bit to uh, embrace that word. Um, sometimes I'll say voiceover professional kind of depends on who I'm talking to or who I'm auditioning with. But yes, I would consider myself an actor. Yes. Okay, awesome. Um, fellow Canadian. And hence the uh, is that the Blue Jays hat there? That That's a Blue Jays hat. Yep. Go Jays. Okay, yep. yeah, okay. So we, you may hear us slipping more, me more so, slipping into Canadianese, Ontario, Ontarian dialect. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Apparently, it's there with the A's and the uh, and the sorries and the uh, boots, but and the boots, yeah. Um, so as I do, I'm gonna write out, uh, write out, read out your bio, but you don't have uh, a work of your own yet to read a blurb about in terms of like a, a actual book, right? You don't have a book hiding somewhere, right? Not I yet? do not have a book, no. Okay, <laughs> okay, good. So uh, um, here we go. Welcome to Michael Neeb. So you went to Mohawk College for radio broadcasting. Mohawk College is located where? Just In Hamilton. In Hamilton, that's right. So for those of you who do not know anything about Canada, shame on you, and specifically Ontario, even bigger shame on you. Uh, uh, Hamilton is in Ontario. So, and it is just to the west, west, east, east of Toronto, where I am. Um, okay. So, uh, you worked in Dawson Creek. That's in BC, right? Yes. That's a little town, about 10,000 people, uh, mile zero of the Alaskan Highway. I went there for my first radio job. And that has absolutely nothing to do with the TV show, Dawson's Creek. Right? It has nothing to do with the TV show. <laughs> However, every time I said, this is where I live or lived, that's what, that's what you get. Yep. Uh, then you moved to Sudbury. Uh, again, for those who don't know geography, Sudbury is back in Ontario, but uh, north, way north. Yeah, it's about uh, from you, from Toronto, it's about four and a half, five hours. Yeah, Middle so it's, city. it's up there. Yeah, it's up there. Uh, and then you worked uh, in like a creative field. So writing, audio, producing, and then you went into just writing. So we're talking ad copy, that sort of thing, right? Yes, this is yeah. when I moved back to Hamilton where uh, my family and my wife's family are from. Um, and that's when I started just exclusively writing copy, yes. And then you started being asked to do freelance uh, for voiceover work or for voice work, I should say, because clearly, uh, clearly you're good at it <laughs> and eventually you were earning enough doing your voice work to quit your job and you are now in your sixth year sixth uh, year it yeah. seems crazy um I don't think I'll ever forget handing in my two-week notice to my boss it was a real fun moment but yeah lots of hard work to get here but it's uh it's certainly a blast yeah 
Good. And is this the, your studio that you work in? Behind this you? is my studio. We, uh, for, for a while I was working, uh, I made like a little makeshift studio in our older house. I was under the stairs. Oh, so yeah. anytime, you know, and there was, you know, some, some, uh, toilet plumbing and stuff right beside <laughs> me. So it was pretty makeshift. So when, uh, what, three years ago or something, we bought this place. I had uh, a construction buddy come in and we had a lot of fun making this studio. So uh, oh, that's that, was wonderful. A, that was a great time. Yeah, no, that's good. That Yeah, it's important to have your own space. I mean, I don't. And I'm can, honestly, but right now there's just one dog for the viewers. Listeners, you don't get such a treat because you don't see the dogs. But I mean, my dogs are constantly somewhere in the background. Today, I only have one. My husband took off um with the other so uh so the, yes it's very important to have a designated space but in, yeah in Toronto if you follow the market it is very difficult to have any sort of space right now so yeah, yeah I can't imagine what the prices are over there it's like it's ridiculous that's why we we've, we've stayed in this condo for 20 years because right we were dumb we had so many opportunities to leave and then now we can't. So yeah, we, yeah, this that's is pretty it. Much it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, okay. So let's get to your broadcasting career a little mm -hmm. bit where it was your like proving ground, your training um, to, to that led you to this. Yeah. Career. I mean, um, you know, I was always a music guy and audio guy and I kind of went with radio on a bit of a whim. Um, but you know, uh, it, with the first job, I was doing producing a lot. So, you know, putting together the ads and the imaging and all the stuff that in between, you know, jocks and music kind of thing. Um, and then, you know, the writing started and uh, somewhere in there, somewhere along the, the journey, you know, um, I started to voice a lot. And, you know, in Sudbury, I was doing it. You kind of start, I was starting to write them in my own voice kind of being like, Oh, I want to, I want to voice this one. I want to voice this one. And then by the time I was in Hamilton, um, you know, the producers there were asking me to voice a lot and it kind of was more and more, we were doing, we had like 16 stations at the time, you know, Hamilton, St. Catharines, London, Windsor. Um, so, you know, I was on all over the place and, and, uh, and by that time I had dabbled a little bit in freelance voiceovers, uh, but then kind of bailed on it a bit and then, you know, back and forth. And then it hit a point where I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to start doing this again. And, you know, built the little studio under the stairs and, you know, day by day, it was just a little bit more and a little bit more. And then it just hit a point where I was like, I could do this full time, you know? So then once I had that realization, um, I worked for about a year, uh, you know, doing radio and at night, you know, you put the kids to bed, it's nine o'clock and I'd come down to the studio for three or four hours every night and uh, work away. And then eventually, like I said, the, the two weeks notice went in and, you know, radio was a blast, but I have not looked back at all. Yeah, no. And it, it's it's amazing how one career can lead to another. Right. Like, right. I mean, it makes sense in some ways, but usually it's like this trajectory of up, 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 up into management or wherever within the same immediate uh, yeah, stream. But I love how people are starting to go laterally and then up. Right. Like it's putting out those feelers, finding something else that matches their skills and then they Right. They run with it. I think it's a great thing. Yeah. I mean, especially in today's, you know, work climate. I mean, you've just, you know, if you're not happy, you, there's so many transferable skills that people have, you know, especially like radio, you know, the writing and the voicing and the acting and all that stuff can be can go somewhere else. And, uh, you know, everybody's working from home and stuff. So it's, you just got to find that niche and dial into it. And so I, I had noticed like on radio when I used to drive a lot. And so I'd be it, during, you know, prime time that yep. they'd have these ads and sometimes you couldn't recognize the, the voice, but sometimes I was like, wait a second, isn't that the morning shows, whoever, right. Yes. Uh, so, it, so it, in the radio, radio world, the radio personalities double as the voices for some of these ads. Yes, yeah, certainly. Uh, especially in the smaller markets. Um, you know, after the morning guys do their shift and they're done at, uh, you know, 
eight thirty, nine o'clock, um, you know, the producer will call him in and say, Hey, I've got a few scripts for you. You know, let's, let's get them done. Um, you know, but I, I just started to really enjoy it. Right. I was the producer saying, you know, recording the takes and whatnot. And, uh, yeah, just, it was just fun. And I was, I was good at it and, uh, yeah, just went from there. And you were also writing the ads, as you said, right. And, but yes. we had this discussion of, uh, writing ads isn't as creative as one thinks like it, it is creative, but then there's this whole process behind it that yeah. sort of strips it out. So go ahead with that one. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> with radio copy, uh, you know, your mind immediately goes to like, you know, the, the car ads like this Sunday, six point, whatever percent financing APR, blah, blah, blah. They, you know, especially with the car ads, there's so much that you need to get in, in 30 seconds. Um, you know, but then you have an opportunity to be creative and you think you've written the funniest, most creative copy in the world and it's going to change radio, but then you've got to get through the sales guy and you've got to get through the client. And, you know, the client has been running the same jingle for 30 years and it just works. So, you know, there's times where it can be a bit discouraging creatively uh, in that regard, but certainly there are a lot of uh, talented talented radio people out there and uh, I had a lot of fun in it and there were those moments where you get to be very very creative but also those moments where you feel like you're just churning out whatever copy just to get it on kind of thing yeah yeah and and it's because you think of radio as just like a person speak you know like this talking head so to speak not right. I'm not trying to yep. minimize the job but th that's what you think of and, and you're buying into the personality you're buying but there's a lot of work that goes behind all of that like you don't just show up in the studio and pass your <laughs> coat to someone and, and off you go I mean probably the big wigs do now but um but there's a lot of like thinking and writing and this and that so it's, it's fascinating, the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, and with the writing uh, away from the ads, some of the funner things to do were the imaging and the promos where, you know, um, uh, you know, the alternative rock stations, you get to be a little bit edgier and get to, you know, say some things that on, you know, your, your top 40 stations, you don't really get to. So those were always a lot of fun. Um you know, putting those together, both writing and producing, those are a lot of fun. And that's where you got to kind of get to shine a little bit more creatively for sure. Yeah. Um, so voice work. Mm -hmm. There's lots that go in that goes into that as well. I mean, we were talking about Andy Circus, mm -hmm. and you are a big fan of his, but there is a ton, which again, I think, well, naively, I thought like you just literally rolled your chair up to something in red and rolled your chair away and off you go. Right. But you have to really become one with the character. And so let's, let's talk about uh, voice work just as, as it is like it, what makes a good voice actor and how do you identify with the material or, or bring it to life? Yeah. I mean, there's so much, I, I do so much. The range is huge. You know, you think about everything that needs a voice, um, things that you wouldn't even, you know, the voice on the bus or the voice for the e-learning program for the staff or God, there's so much of it. So uh, you certainly have to bounce around and convince people that you're, you know what you're talking about. Um, you know, so for the audiobooks you know, nonfiction or fiction, um, you've really got to get in there. And, and I mean, I do a lot of video games too. So that's, that's certainly acting and, and finding the character and, and all those things. But then, you know, you've got your on hold messaging for the, the bank across the street, or, you know, I do so many projects for so many people all over the place that, uh, that's part of the biggest excitement really is, is waking up and just not knowing what I'm going to be voicing today. Um, you know, and it's the same with the auditions, you know, the auditions are a grind, but you really got to make sure it's, it sounds like your, your finished audio, what you would deliver to a client just to give yourself the best, uh, best chance of getting it. So yeah, it's certainly a lot of hats and, uh, 
you know, jug, but juggling all those, all those balls are, are part of the joy of it. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking, cause my friend uh, isn't, is like a actor act, like you see him acting. And right. so he's always doing uh, reels. I think it's something yeah. to send out to for whatever. And it's a lot of work, a lot of work to send and a mo- I, I well, I don't, I don't want to speak for other people, but for me, I would be very emotionally involved in it because I feel like you're literally being critiqued on you. Certainly. I, I, I feel like I have, you know, hundreds of little tiny interviews every week. Right. But what I like to say is you got to send it and forget it because with voiceovers, you know, I would probably do a lot more auditions than your your actor friend so you know casting directors don't want you to email them afterwards and you know you you can't be like oh I just did this huge audition for this radio spot that's going to play all over Canada and and the states oh I'm going to refresh the email again and again you just really have to be like oh that was fun I hope I get it bye you know (laughs) so when eventually you do get a short list or you do book the gig it's like oh it's this one from three months ago I thought that was long gone so yeah you can't dwell on it or you'll just go you'll go crazy yeah yeah (laughs) but luckily there's so much voice work out there so I mean even if you're not getting it's not like there's one let's say one position for a hundred people um you obviously you can make a sustainable living doing this because like you said, their voices creep in everywhere and you don't, you yeah. don't even hear them. Ha- like you, you interact with them. You hear them. Like if you're on the bus or if you're whatever, the, the airport or whatever, right. I mean, maybe not the airport, but, um, but yeah. And, in all, and especially with all this uh, e-learning, I, I used to work for a large organization where we had to do these modules all the time Yes, and there would be parts that would be narrated and, and you just, like, you don't think that this is somebody's job. Like it just appears on your computer and you're like, okay, I did that. And then, yeah. but it's everywhere, everywhere. Certainly, certainly the more I talk to friends and family about what I do, um, the more they realize it's like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a voice. That's a person recording somewhere. You know, you hear things and it's like, oh, it's the airport voice, you know, and, or whatever voice. And it's like, oh, and you start to realize like, okay, This is a job that people have. I mean, even with cartoons back in the day, you know, before it was famous actors doing all the voices, you know, like Bugs Bunny or Animaniacs or whatever, they were just a voice and you never really thought about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And even in film, uh, you know, you'll have certain films that have like the narrator. I usually, I, I don't know. I, I watched a horror film that had a narrator behind the story that's it was a very interesting concept and then I think there's other ones I'm sure so again it's it's this presence of someone and you sort of take them for granted because you don't see their face right easter egg right there folks for my <laughs> youtube my audience <laughs> there's one of my girls <laughs> um and uh Anyway, yeah, so you're right. It's everywhere. But I love the story that you told about when you were going around the table. Um, at <laughs> Was it your wife's family's house? And, and you're yeah, all... Yeah, this is a good one. I did a, I did a project. Uh, I've been working with Clarium uh, on a game called Raid Shadow Legends for a long time. And uh, anybody who's ever on Reddit or YouTube will, will know <laughs> what I'm talking about. The, their ads are everywhere. But... Uh, so I did this campaign this year and it involved like the full mocap suit and everything for, for death night. And it was about this like ultimate death night campaign. And really, you know, it was just me being a, a cartoon talking skeleton. And, um, Oh, so my wife's family had a big gathering, you know, all these people we don't really see very often. And we're all around the, the fire pit having drinks and chatting and everybody's going around talking about what they do for a living and it's all very important stuff like a, a nurse and you know all these kinds of things and <laughs> contributing to society and it gets some comes around to me and it's like oh mike what is, what's what's new well i'm a talking skeleton <laughs> for a living and that's that's really it and that's where i am currently in my career so <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and i don't know i mean maybe in the in the more northerly states um 
because I am hoping I'll have a broad audience. Uh, but a lot of Canadians do spend their time around a fire pit. So it's a thing. Around a fire pit, drinking beer, talking about hockey. Yeah, it's 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 it is actually a, a thing. Maybe not so much in Toronto because it's sort of outlawed in Toronto. Um, I think I you can't I, I you have to have a fake fire pit or something or, that's very controlled or just not, a big barrel that you could just burn in out you know under the under the under the bridge uh, oh yeah if, if you if you if you go under the highway and the highway bridges yeah, yeah under can, the gardener yeah you can burn whatever you want but yeah. um yeah in in our dignified you know we think we're holier than thou up or down here in toronto uh it, we're not allowed open flames so you have to use like some dinky little you know those like chafing things things right. that caterers use so yeah, yeah. as torontonians we hang around uh, a chafing dish <laughs> I'm kidding, we don't. But certainly the 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 fire in the fires in Canada. That's uh, wearing yeah, our, wearing our toques and drinking our tims. Exactly for as long as you can. Oh, I have a tims around here. I should have brought it out. Um, anyway, that's another stereotype, but it's true. Unfortunately, it's true. That we're they're all true. They're, yes, all they're all very true. very true. It's, except for the the um, igloo thing. We don't all live in igloos and. Yeah, I mean, Southern, I we have snow right now, but it's little, the Southern Ontario, we don't get any snow anymore. Exactly. So on Friday, and this is just an aside, so excuse me, listeners and uh, viewers, but I go off on tangents. On Friday, uh, whatever day that was, it was, I, like I sent, so my father lives in the States in a very warm climate, right? And he's always kind of like, oh, look at my day, you know, thanks dad. Uh, especially in the winter, he gets a great bit of joy out of that. So I happened upon this grassy field and the grass was growing. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, click. And it's January and it was lush. Like it was crazy. And then another friend had sent some flower that was blooming that does kind of bloom under the snow, but it, it has this like weird right. relationship with snow. And, uh, and so he had snapped that and I was like, this is global climate change is real because it's a thing yeah like how would when you were a kid I don't know how old you are but when I was a kid January was awful like it was awful my brother and I used to tunnel in the snow Thank and you. build like our pond was frozen every winter yes you know now yeah. it's you know, there's no use doing the outdoor hockey rink because it doesn't freeze yeah yeah and lastly there is actually a little bit of truth behind the uh, igloo uh, scenario because we used to as part of gym when we were in junior school like elementary school yeah I don't know if you had this project ever but we had to build an igloo no that's just the most <laughs> Canadian thing I've ever heard in yeah. my whole life yeah it was it, <laughs> but it's very complex I mean, you have to know your angles and it, there's a whole there it's, it's it sounds a, difficult it's an art. I don't like the winter, so I'll just, I'll not. I'll you're not, you're like, yeah, I'll watch from inside. Thank you. Yeah. Um, okay. So um, speaking of all of this, yes. because we have, we don't think we have an accent, uh, but we do. And it comes out str more like strongly at different points than others. Yes. How do you, well, I guess it's like any accent training, but how do you train out an accent that you don't see out? You see that? I just did it um about uh how do you train yourself not to say what the words that i is it a part of becoming one with your voice and saying oh yeah now i hear it or yeah. how, how does that work i mean certainly what i like to describe my voice as is is neutral north american um now i'm sure a lot of clients would disagree with me but uh, uh i get a lot of american work so my wife will make fun of me because you know data and data or organization and organization, you know, I've started to like use the American pronunciation in my everyday speech. Um, but aside from that, I mean, you know, with audiobooks, there's times where you've got to do an accent, or, you know, and I'm always joking with my kids about accents and trying to, you know, mimic, mimic actors or mimic accents and stuff. But um, there's obviously ones I cannot do uh you know but um i had one actually an, an audio book a while ago where i had to narrate the entire book as a new york gangster who was also a hobgoblin oh, that's right. That's right. so it was very interesting um 
you know, the last book I did, there was like a Russian accent, which are those are always, you know, the British and the Russians are always, you know, you can do evil, those, but uh, they're always the yeah. evil people. In the, it's so weird. He like, wasn't evil, actually. He was. a oh, he, Yeah, I know. Departure. I oh, thank know. goodness. Because every Russian I know is not an evil person. Every right. Ukrainian I know is not an evil person. So like it's strange how these stigmas get attached or not stigmas, yeah. but like these uh, stereotypes or right. pigeonholes get attached to certain accents. Like, Oh, he, so-and-so is British and this, Oh, it's going to be bad news. Like what? Anyway. Right. But uh, yeah, we, we were saying about Andy circus, you know, and uh, I had just listened to uh, him reading Lord of the Rings fellowship of the ring. And he's just, he's just remarkable. And with the amount of voices he has to do, like it, it's insane. And, uh, you know, a big part of audiobook production, especially the the fiction stuff is is character voices and remembering who's who and who sounds like what. Um, so I was watching him on this interview with Stephen Colbert and he was he was talking about the process because Colbert is a huge, huge Lord of the Rings guy. And he said something that I was like, oh, my God, I do that. Um because Colbert was like, how do you remember all these voices? And he goes, it's almost where my head is placed, like in the microphone, you know, like Gimli will talk down here and like, oh, Meridoc is up, you know, kind of thing. And th there's those placements when you're reading and he goes, oh, you know, that character kind of was down here because he's a bit lower and mischievous kind of thing. So it's those little, you know, tips and tricks and and whatever you can do to just um, get jump into character, because of course the dialogue is back and forth, and you know, male and female and all these different accents. So you, yeah, you just gotta figure out your little tips and tricks to to jump back in and back out of characters. And I guess there would be if you're trying to uh, adopt a new accent, you'd have to be watching or listening to a lot of. At native speakers so to pick up the little into in intonations that they have may have or right yeah and, and again you know um i'm not not the big wigs making the big bucks yet and uh you know on audible people really when they don't like your accent they really like to review and let you know all about it but um yeah i mean you know if 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 there's an accent i'd struggle with you know, I'll let the author know, like, this one might not be super great, but, um, you know, you do your best. And, you know, usually there's a, there's like a phrase or two I'll have that like goes with the accent that I have to be like, oh, it's this, you know, that kind of gets me in and out. So. Yeah. 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 There was somebody who on TikTok or somebody who said they, they, in order to start the accent off, they have to say, I can't remember, I, you know, TikTok, you just keep going through, right? Right. Um, it, it, so they have to actually say certain things to start the accent off. Like it's a certain set, whatever Certainly. expression. Yeah. And then, yes. and then they can slip into it, right. but without it, they, or it was a comedian actually. Uh, I should note these things right. down because you never know when you're going to need this information yeah. in the future. It's just that, neat how, how, you know, actors of varying levels will do those same kind of tricks and not even really know that the other one is doing it. The, you know, the mic placement was a big one and, you know, yeah, the phrase to jump in and out of a character, certainly. Yeah. It's, it's funny. Um, and actually that's, that's a great segue to this, like how you narrate. So again, naively, because uh, I wasn't giving much thought until I started this project. Like I listen to audiobooks. I yep. think, oh wow, this is, you know, great. Yeah, there must be some production behind it. There's got to be some editing. Yep. But I who actually sits and like because you're enthralled with the story. So you're not going to sit and reflect on the <laughs> process of how the story got to your ears, right? Right. Um, so I naively was like, oh, I wonder if this is all in one take. Oh, I wonder how long, you know, just these crazy things. Cause yep. My time, and I don't know about, uh, and actually, this is a great interactive moment down below. Provide your comments on when you or wherever you're providing these comments, uh, on when you listen to audio books. So, I, despite my appearance, I used to, I, I mean, I don't need to go anymore, clearly, because I'm just so perfect, <laughs> but I, I used to go to the gym a lot. I'm completely joking, audience members. I have to get back into the gym, hence why you see mostly the top. <laughs> So I uh, went to the gym a lot and I found audiobooks to be wonderful. And, and I would 
that would be my time. So I'd be told this wonderful story and would take my mind off of whatever activity I absolutely didn't want to do. And yeah. it made things more pleasurable. Now I don't commute anymore. So, but I, my husband listens to a ton of audiobooks during his commute. Um, uh, if we go away, like we go up to North Bay a lot. So oh. yeah, up to the North there. And um, so we'll listen as a family. We'll, yeah. we'll take my mom up and we listen as a family to that. And uh sometimes I even listen if I'm on a plane so where do you listen to your audiobooks but back to the whole point is that I was like oh it must be done in one take and then it's just edited out no ridiculous so what's <laughs> what's yeah. your process yes yeah, certainly um so uh usually with audiobooks you get paid per finished hour which right. at the end of the day is closer to three hours per finished hour so you know you narrate a chapter you edit it you apply your eq and your compression and all that fun stuff uh you take out the breaths that are that are big and gross you know any any dead air or burps or whatever happens i mean it's you know reading for a long time you got to take a sip of water um so all those things have to come out and then uh yeah, so it's a long process. It takes a while. Um, but at the end of the day, the audiobook production is a lot of fun. Um, it's, you know, as I'm a I'm a big story guy. Uh, I, I read a lot. Now with my job, I don't read as much as I used to. However, I like you, I take in audiobooks all the time. Um, whether I'm in the car or I'm grocery shopping or you know, doing laundry around the house. I've got a bud in or it's on my Sono speaker. And um, it's how I, 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 I've i recently done, you know, a, a little Stephen King binge, Lord of the Rings. Like I said, I've just done a few of my favorite books. I'm doing The, the Passage right now, with Justin Cronin. Um, so yeah, it, it's, a, it's a wonderful way. And again, that being said, I'm a music guy too. I love my tunes as loud as possible, but it's just different, you know, it's different than the music and it's different than the radio. And it's, it's just someone telling you a story. It's wonderful. And it, we are really programmed to that as a, as a society because oral storytelling was the original form of, of storytelling. Right. right. And, and speaking about gathering around the fire, well, people would literally, because they didn't have electricity, so they'd be gathering around a fire and, in telling these tales so whether they were yeah. myths or whatever um and so there's something programmed into us to find great comfort in it and and most parents i mean not all but some parents read to their children uh, to get them to sleep sure. or whatever and so then if you've had that experience there's another level of of uh connection that makes you feel um in some way comforted or so it's yeah, it's a lovely thing. And I'm really glad because I remember 20, 25, because that's how old I am that I can say this. I remember 20 to 25 years <laughs> ago distinctly because I was an adult. Uh, my mom and stepdad, when they would make their journeys to North Bay, uh, they would get a bunch of books on tape. And that was that was how you did it back in the day. And so yep. it was the same process as right. you are doing. It's just that you had a cassette for, oh my gosh, for some people, I'll have to display what a cassette okay, is. Okay, I know what cassettes are. I, I made mixtapes. Yeah, no, but I mean, for some of the people who may be watching this, it'll be like a cassette. What is that? Yeah, they'll have to go to their parents and ask. Oh God, um, don't worry. I will, sorry, listeners, you'll have to look it up yourself, but for the viewers, I'm throwing a cassette in there. So- <laughs> like a visual, not, I don't, I, I don't have any left. I think I got rid of them all. Um, so uh, my point of this is that the technology has changed, but there's still such a demand. And, and originally I think that the cassette of book on tape, which it took me forever to actually say, to actually change over to say an audio book. Cause I was so used to saying, Oh, the book on tape, book right? On tape. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was big for like those with uh, who had visual impairment. That was a big thing. And now yeah. obviously those who are visually impaired can just access their material like Absolutely. anywhere. Um, 
but then there became a market for people who were like, they would jog with their, oh boy, here we go, Walkmans. <laughs> I got to oh, put yeah. a, I got to put an image of that in because people would be like, I don't know what a Walkman is. Um, or they would, you know, clip it on while they were doing housework. So then yep. I think that is the natural progression of how well, and audiobooks came along. What's great now too is, is, you know, it's the same with like, with TV you know, you're talking to friends and, oh, you got to watch this show and, oh, you've got to watch this show or or movie or whatever. And I'm getting really good at saying, no, that's not for me, you know, because there's yeah. so much out there now that no matter what you're into, I'm a big horror guy. And, you know, with audiobooks or TV or movies or video games, um, there's so much, you know, so so listen to what you like and and you know you're gonna get hooked on the audiobooks i've been trying to get my family into it um you know uh my brother's a big sports guy and there's so much there's so much content i keep telling him you know um and and again with what i do i struggle to pick up a book at night yeah, or, or whenever it, because probably. i've i've been reading all day um and so this is it's, a, it's just a wonderful alternative for sure Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it can pack in. I, there was a company that was actually marketing. I don't think it was, it was uh, Amazon, but it was marketing it, or it was targeting that exact scenario. Either you're too tired or you don't have enough time, but you can just put, maybe it was Amazon, put on an audio book and learn. I, theirs was specifically targeted towards learning new things. Right. So it was all nonfiction. So maybe again, why don't I make note? I'm going to start having a notepad right beside me and say, oh, I might need this fact for the future. Um, but it is, it, even if like you wanted to consume educational material, great way to do that, right? Some Certainly. People, yeah. Some people learn better through listening than they do yep. through reading yep. so it's really opened up a whole world of of uh, yep. fiction or nonfiction. Yep. you know whatever you're whatever you're into there's something out there for you you don't have to just watch a show or listen to an audiobook that's not quite in your wheelhouse like it's there's so much out there now yeah and and I always my heart always breaks a little bit when people like say oh yeah I read that book and then it turns out that they I'm, I'm, my heart doesn't break for them. They, it, it, they listen to the book, right? And people, so in, in different forms, like on, yeah. you know, Facebook or whatever, they're like, oh, I read that book. And, you know, it, and then it, they say it was, somehow it came out that they listened to it. And then people attack them and they're like, well, that's not really reading. But, you know, I, I think that's really um, sad because number one, you're still consuming the same content in a different manner. And you're still mm -hmm. using your imagination to fill in the you're using very similar functions now I'm, I'm don't claim to be a scientist but you i i as a yeah. user and as a user of both print and audio the same thing goes on in my mind and it it's it's just um it's sort of and i hate to use like buzzwords but it is can be a bit ableist to hear people disparaging those who are consuming their stories through audio because maybe that's the only time or the only way they can consume either because their literacy is not uh, advanced enough yeah. to read uh, fluently, or maybe they don't have enough time, or maybe they have a disability that, you know, does not allow them to right. um, interact with a book. So I, I really want to start a campaign that if someone has, can, has listened to an audio, it's this, it's not the same action as reading, but it is right. the same mechanism and we shouldn't make people feel badly for choosing Certainly. audio over reading. So Certainly. I, I mean, myself, so I'm a busy body, you know, I gotta, I gotta be moving all the time. And you know, if I'm not working, I want to be doing something. So it's perfect. Cause you just throw in the bud or whatever, and you can take in your story while you're doing something. Yep. So that, that is my uh, soapbox moment here because, and I'm, I'm starting that campaign, no shame for the game. No, I have to come up with it. You'll, <laughs> you'll get there. You'll find yeah, something. Well, I'll do it. I'll, I'll get her on her. I'll get on her. Um, the other thing that you had told me related that story about was you were working with a client overseas somewhere and you, and this comes back to regional uh expressions and that sort of thing and you kept saying was it golden or no beauty beauty that was it yeah, yeah this, it... Was, this was the raid shadow legends people and uh they're in the ukraine 
And uh, so some, you know, some of them are having a rough go right now and, and have moved to different places and whatnot. Um, so that was, that was, that was a little crazy, but we were, we were having a session and at the end of it, uh, he goes, what do you mean by beauty? I've got to ask you. And I'm like, well, uh, anything can be beauty. You know, a goal can be beauty or a take could be beauty or you could be a beauty because you're a good guy. And he goes, wow, that's, he's like, you know, and they kind of uh, snowballed into asking about some Canadianisms and uh, yes, I do play hockey every Thursday, you know, uh, yes, I do like beer and, you know, it kind of just from there, it was, it was really, really funny. And I, this is again, a little off topic, but not so much. So because Netflix or any online streaming service really may have, uh, something you can watch or listen to that's in uh, uh, originated from a different place in the world. So, for instance, I am a huge consumer of uh, Korean series because they are so good. So Is that right? Love, yes. But it's just remarkable because I am I am so aware that because we have our own sort of Canadians have yep. our own and even from province to province we have our own uh yeah very much so yeah um that the uh when we're watching a korean drama let's say and the, you can tell that there's something we're missing as the audience because the uh, the translation doesn't pick it up right and so it's funny how you have to be almost a student of the world to to get all these little expressions which you might well, not even recognize his expressions. Yeah. yeah I mean, uh, a great example, that same conversation. Uh, he said, well, you know, what's big over here is letter Kenny. No way. And I said, are you kidding me? And he goes, I know some get- like hardcore European dudes who what? love letter Kenny. How do they even get the, co- the humor you know, in it? And the, the use, the use guys and all that stuff. Like that's, you know, they filmed that in Sudbury and I lived in Sudbury for eight years. And that is a thing that's used guys, these that's guys how yeah. they talk and yeah. all those letter Kennyisms that they, they just do so well with the Canadian comedy. Um, I just found that absolutely hysterical that they would not only like the show, but be like, this is, this is one of the funniest ever. So, so Again, or anybody listening or watching, please do yourself a favor and go watch Letter Kenny, Letter Kenny, because it is. But see, I don't like to talk it up too much because then people will yeah. be like, "It was the dumbest thing I ever watched." There but- are some, you know, season one and two are, you know, it gets better, <laughs> um, but it's Just very. It, of them. It's so truly Canadian, like it's even, uh, you know, the follow up the Shorzy. Did you watch that? Oh yeah, I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, no. But for hockey guys, it's, <laughs> it's so, so ridiculous. funny. It's so it's funny. So ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, it, it's such a great. You're right. It's so Canadian in a lot of ways. I mean, again, people may say, "Oh, well, that's not what." Because there's a guy on TikTok again who does all the provincial yeah. accents, and the, he creates this fantastic comedy. I have to find him. Ugh. Right. And uh, and so it, it's it's truly Ontario. And borderline Quebec, uh, a little bit of humor. It may not serve as well in BC, let's say, yeah. um, necessarily, or out in Newfoundland, which has right. their own brand of of fantastic yep. uh, culture. Um, but if you want to get an idea of Northern Ontario, and a little bit like close to the border of Quebec, then watch Letter Kenny. Oh yeah. God, it's genius! It's genius. Some of my favorites, though, is is you know, again, I work with a lot of American clients, and uh, you know, at the end of a big project, they'll send me you know the W nine form or whatever, <laughs> and I'm always like, oh, guys, like I don't, I'm Canadian, I don't need to fill this out, and they're like, what? You're Canadian? And I was like, oh, I hell, I, I, yeah, you nailed it, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's always interesting, um, you know, getting those gigs and, and passing for one of passing for one of them, you know. And it you think that you're passing. So I shared the Minnesota story with you. Right. So you think you're passing. You think that you're doing a good job of it. I just slipped into yeah. and it. And when I and I was in California and I was discussing something with a man and 
somehow it came up that I thought I was dropping a bomb on him because I could not hear a, the difference between our accents at all. Right. <clears throat> and so he said, I said, yeah, we're from Canada. And he's like, oh, yeah, I thought either Canada or Minnesota. And I was Minnesota, like, eh? Minnesota, eh? And so I'm like, what? Yeah. I thought I totally blended in. He's like, you absolutely don't. I had one just the other week that the guy was like, you are saying about a boot. You're saying a boot. And I'm like, I swear to God, I'm not. <laughs> you know, so I had to give him a, a bunch of takes to try oh. and uh, Americanize it. So that is a big challenge trying to, I guess, just be hyper aware of, am I slipping in these regional pronunciations? Yeah, it's where the acting comes in, you know, nonfiction or fiction or whatever the gig is. You've got to sound like you know what you're talking about, right? About, 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 um, about. so, you know, you just got to adjust. And if they say like, oh, I can hear it, then you just go try back. again and, yeah. You know. So you go, yeah, you were saying you go chapter by chapter. Yes. Um, how, do you try to stop between chapters? It, yeah, like I've I've done it. There was one where I'm like, I'm going to I'm going to experiment here and read the whole thing and then edit it. But it's exhausting. I mean, there's only so long you can read out loud and perform. Um, so what I like to do, uh, the last one I did was this thriller and the chapters were tiny, like, the, you know, a few pages kind of thing, which was great because you could, you could perform and then edit and it's all still fresh in your brain. So you're like, oh yeah, I screwed up here, delete, you know, oh, this and that. Um, whereas the time where I tried to read the whole thing, I don't remember what it was, but I remember just hitting a point in my day being, you get mush mouth. You know, you start to get frustrated. You've screwed up a whole bunch, you you know, so you've really got to just find the process that works for you. Um, you know, the guy, the big guys making the big bucks have a producer and they would just come in and read it, you know, but uh, for me, that does all of it. You just got to find something that works and make sure you get the best performance. Yeah, yeah, it's it's. When you're doing it all yourself, I can tell you from experience, right. it's a lot yep. of work. Yeah, yeah, yep. it's a lot of work. Um, and specifically working with clients. So you, I guess you do the audition for the clients. I, I mean, I'm talking like the authors now, right? Who have come to okay. you to uh, narrate their their book. So uh, I know that we have a mutual um uh, uh, an author whose interview is going to be coming up soon, um, or depending on how I'm going to be posting everything, it might have already been there. Right. Um, but so you are you posted on Amazon's like yeah, it's yeah. called ACX ACX.com, right. and uh, that's where essentially I would audition for any of the audiobooks that would go to Audible. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the same process as any of the other auditions, you know, you, you, uh, they send a bit of a transcript and, you know, a little description of what it is. Uh, you know, you give it a quick read, you do your audition, you send them your little blurb. Hi, I'm Michael. I'm a professional. I'm good. And you want to hire me and so far and so forth. <laughs> and then, uh, you wait, you know, you press send and you go, okay, next. And, you know, if, if, uh, I did one the other day. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to get shortlisted to this for sure. This is in the bag. Two hours later, unfortunately, you have not been chosen to, you know, so it just, it's just, sometimes it can just come down to the preference of your voice. I just like this guy more, or I just like, you know, with, uh, with Libby there that, that we, that uh, the assassins um, legacy she reached out. It was a quick reach out. And, you know, she's like, I just loved your voice and performance. And it just sometimes just comes down to preference, which is a shame because you think you nailed it. And they just like, eh, I don't like you next, you know, so but again, you kind of you got to let that stuff roll off your back because the next day you're going to have another audition and you, you just never know. How much of your time is given to auditions? A lot. Would you say? Yeah. In a week, like, oh, my gosh hours and hours a lot yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, I start my day with the auditions um you know it's a good way to warm up and get your voice going and jump into a whole bunch of stuff and then you know I start with with my my bookings and clients that come to me yeah 
And do you have uh, any series like authors who've given you, you know, three, four, five? Yeah, certainly. Um, I did the Forever Man series. That was like nine books or something. Amazing. Or seven or eight or nine or something that kept going. That was a lot of fun. But those were, you know, the first ones were some of my first books for some of my first readings. So I go back and I'm like, oh, I want to do that one again. Um but yeah, I mean, the Assassin's Legacy, that's got a sequel coming out yep. soon. The one I just did, uh, it was called Gone by uh, uh, Reagan Keeter. That's got a sequel coming out. And he, you know, he liked me. So he, he said uh, he'd go for me with the sequel. So hopefully that happens. And yeah, I mean, it's always nice when there's when there's a sequel and they like you and they hire you again. Because you want, you want that you know, just like the, the author has their voice throughout the series. You want that same narrator yeah. to really tie it all together. Yeah, no, that's so that's, I, it, it can make or break it because we talked about this. And so some audio, like if you're uh, getting your audio books off of the library or off, uh, there's a subscription um, service called scribed S C R I B D. And uh, so it's part of the subscription. So I'm like, Oh, I'll just, you know, whatever. Um, and the, some of the narrators on there, it can really detract from the story because of something they've done. And it's just, you've, it's, it's like a writer who all of a sudden puts in this very strangely constructed sentence or a very long run on. And all of a sudden you're jolted out of the story because right. you're so focused on the, so I've had that experience where I think, oh, I can't, I can't. I know. So it's good to have someone that conveys the characters well and narrates the story well because it can jar someone out. Yeah, you, of, yeah. you really got to think about how big of a decision it is choosing a narrator because just like you said, if somebody clicks, oh, I'm going to go listen to my favorite book. And then you're like, oh my God, this guy's voice is driving me crazy. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, and then they might, they might even, press fast forward, you know how there's that option of like 1.5 times speed. <laughs> Whereas as a narrator, it's like, oh no, don't yeah. speed it up. You got to listen. It's yeah. like, it's like skipping dialogue in a video game. You just, you just don't do it, you know? <laughs> Cause there's gems in there, right? Yeah. And as you know, with what I do, you know, you, you can, you can see them in the booth and how many hours and hours yeah. and hours they must've spent on that. So you know yeah so just listen listen already a little sacrilegious to to skip forward yeah so it, it it takes about you said one finished hour of audio is it's about 85, three hours yeah but in terms of word count so right you can do about 8500 words in one hour give or take depending on your speed yes yeah so that's kind of how you 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 judge how long it's going to take Right. Because you have to provide it like with anything, if you're. Yes. Quoting. I mean, ACX also has that, you know, when they upload this, the manuscript, they put how many words and it kind of does the, the quick math for you. So it's pretty easy to, you know, tell the author how, how many hours give or take. Usually it's a little bit less because you, you know, you're a little bit quicker, but yeah. Uh, you, you just um, glitched there for a second, Damn it. the delay. Uh, so what was the last thing you said? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, ACX has has the little calculator. So it kind of tells you so it's it's real easy to give a quote, you know, and then again, sometimes they like your voice, but they don't like your quote. So, you know, on to the right. next one. Yeah. Right, right, right. So is there an, I guess not through this ACX, but if you, if someone came to you um, through a different channel, is there any sort of, do people try to negotiate uh, or do they just take it at like, okay, yeah, this is your quote. Okay. Bye. No, like, absolutely. I mean, what's tough for a lot of these authors is they're doing it on their own. Right. So that's, that's coming right out of their pocket. Um, so yeah, sometimes they'll be like, oh, could you take this over this? Like, what's your wiggle room? It's a negotiation, just like any other gig that, um, I have, you know, it's a lot of what I do is, is, is negotiation on, on pricing and stuff for sure. Yeah. Well, that's kind of, that's good to know. I mean, cause you're right. A lot of people want to do an audiobook and they can't afford it yet. Yeah. Um, but 
but it would broaden the audience base, right? And- yeah, it, it's certainly huge. Um, and again, unfortunately, is you get what you pay for, um, especially with this business. And, you know, sometimes saving money will, you know, hurt the project a little bit. Um, so, you know, there's been times where I've been in negotiations with an author and I just like, I just can't take that. It's just too far below my rates, but you want to help them and you want the project to succeed, but you know, you gotta, you gotta stick to your gun sometimes for sure. Yeah. Because you are a sole proprietor of your business and yeah, it, it's, it's tough. It's a tough spot to be in, but certainly. Oh, so do you think that obviously that this is kind of a dumb question, but that there is great value to having uh, a book in many different forms? Yeah, I think it's huge, you know, whether it's whether someone likes to read it or take it in in audio or whatever else. I mean, the more channels you have to promote your book, you know, the more chance it has to succeed, I think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's uh, the way of the world right now, because we have so we have access to so much. Back in the right. day, uh, print was king, but yeah. no longer. And so, right, those those online reviews are everything too, right? You gotta you want those five stars, and you want as many as you can. Yeah, and especially so, it's it's kind of an interesting uh, process for the review of an audible because not only is the story being reviewed, but then the narrator yeah. all also comes into consideration. So. That's like a double barrel thing. So yeah, you have to right. select. They have they have uh, story performance and overall is what you can rate. And uh, you know, again, like anything else, unfortunately, is when people don't like your stuff, is they certainly will let everybody know. Uh, whereas sometimes, if somebody was like, "Oh, that was a really great book," you know, next they won't review it. You know, so I, you know, those five star reviews, those positive reviews doesn't have to be five, but as long as it's positive, you know, it goes a long way. Yeah. In, in another interview that I did or a conversation, uh, we were talking about the review process and how if you're going to leave a review and maybe it's neutral, like a three out of five or something or, or a two, gosh, uh, make it constructive, right? It, right? Not just like, oh, this guy bugged me. Okay, thanks. Yeah, that's that's not helpful at all. Right. Uh, because a lot of people will take those reviews and try to improve something. So instead of using it as, as a place of hate or to get your frustration out, provide something constructive right. uh, so that it can be a, a, turned into a, a teaching moment or a learning moment for the person who created this body of work unfortunately Um, that's not how people on the internet usually are (laughs) I know it's a shame it's really a shame often I I'll either leave a review uh I I I'm like I don't like my review style I find I'm like good great loved like (laughs) because I can't I I my creativity leaves me in a review but yeah I, if I am really dead set against something, I think, who am I to, to unless someone's done me bodily harm on purpose, right. uh, I won't leave necessarily a negative review at all because I think, well, that's just an opinion and it's very subjective. And it, I, I, I have been swayed by reading reviews and I don't feel that my voice is going to offer anything. So I just move on my merry way yep. um, instead of being a negative Nelly. But right. I try to do that a lot in my life to just cr- bring people up instead of knock them down. So yeah, I learned a long time ago, just don't read the YouTube comments, you know, just, just oh, yeah. don't even do it. I'm worried about that. I put it a whole introductory sort of just like, what is the scope of this? Yeah. And I actually said, you know, I'm open to constructive criticism hundred percent, but those that just want to spew hate will be ignored because I can't stop you, but I'm not going to acknowledge you either. hundred percent. Cause it's like, there's too much. Everyone's yep. being smashed Don't against the rocks right it. now. Yep. <laughs> it's, it's really bad. Um, so any advice for someone who that is not a Tim's cup, I am going no. to point out. <gasps> My my wife wanted a, a breakfast sandwich this morning, so I got a, a McDonald's coffee. Ah, you're, I'm, Sorry, revoking your, I'm revoking your uh, Canadian citizenship <laughs> right here. <laughs> I'm getting on, on the phone with the ministry. Um, 
any advice for someone who wants to get into your line of business? Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, practice a lot, get a home studio, uh, practice some more, um, listen to audiobooks, uh, play video games, you know, um, my gosh, practice even more, get, uh, go get some training, talk to people who are in the business. Um, yeah, spread yourself out over the internet, start getting your voice out there. Demos are huge. Get a commercial demo and an e-learning demo and an IVR demo and a video game demo and all those fun things. Um, yeah, the work is out there. It's a grind. You know, you have to keep on it all the time. Uh, can't let your foot off the gas or, you know, or you're just not going to get any business and yeah, practice. Practice, practice. Yeah. So I think, are you saying practice is important? Is that Practice is important. I think <laughs> maybe a little bit. Oh, um, I think you missed out practice. Practice, think, practice. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've had a whole bunch of radio people come to me, you know, ex colleagues or, or whatever um, and say, you know, how did you do this? How can I do this? And uh, you know, a lot of it is just that grind at the beginning and just staying on it all the time, which is, which is tough for some people, but, uh, you know, it's doable. That's what it takes to build a business. You just have to keep, keep on keeping on. Yeah. Pitter patter, right? Yeah. And get at her. Oh, pitter patter. Let's get at her. (laughs) You have to watch later, Kenny. Uh, yeah, just so many scenes are flashing before my eyes right now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's just so it's it's so classic it's you know back in the day uh the beachcombers were i don't know if you were old mm. enough to watch the beachcombers they uh that was the, or the king of kensington right. i don't know these are probably way before your time yeah. uh those were the classic canadiana type yeah. but i'm so glad that now we have a much stronger more comical and less depressing i mean king of kensington was pretty good but beachcomber there was always some tragedy going on it, yeah. you have to look it up it's, it's it was it's crazy how how letter kenny has caught on though i didn't i did not anticipate it getting as big as it did for sure well and Shits creek like oh huge, huge. yeah that was that was good what a show that was my oh, goodness my gosh, so good so yeah can he, uh, and kim's convenience like there's a yep. lot of gems i didn't going watch on. that one but i heard good things yeah it's fantastic and it, it's i mean i i don't know how much of it <laughs> is like truly well Shit's creek isn't really like that canadian in its content because right. it could be it's so neutral it could be anywhere yes um kim's convenience is a little bit more but again it, it's more, sort of more of a universal north american but part of letter kenny is making fun of canada yeah. and canadians and how yeah stereotypical it's, we are yeah so good anyway yeah. thank you for being canadian thank you for, <laughs> for oh heck no problem oh, heck, hey. eh? uh Go for it's been rip. great to have you eh? it's it's, it's, it's been, we should have done this whole show in our very northern Canadian accents. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, then, then no, no, because then people would have been like, this guy's a voice actor. Yeah, that's it. right. That's right. <laughs> it would have been a detriment. Yeah. Um, but thank you. Words of wisdom, lots of insight. Uh, yeah. Anything else that you wanted to share or parting, uh, parting gems of wisdom or? I don't know. You know, drink Tim's. Go, go listen to audiobooks and uh, drink Tim Hortons. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, watch some hockey. There so yeah, no, this has been very informative because I'm a hundred percent certain that other people had a great misunderstanding or just a big black box of not knowing the right. process behind. So this has been wonderful. Yeah. I mean, we didn't talk about technology and things like that so much, but we can now get put a, an idea in our heads about what goes on behind the scenes of audiobooks. So this has been enlightening and thank you thank you for being my guest a lot of fun thanks for having me take care you too